guys, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Maligator Mom. If you're new here and you are interested in the Belgian Malinois breed, especially if you're a novice handler or you're interested in family protection for your family, then this would be a great channel for you to follow along with. I actually am a busy mom of four and I have three Belgian Malinois that I train in personal protection with the help of a professional trainer. So today's video is going to be answering one of the questions that I probably get the most often, which is how do you manage three Belgian Malinois? So if you are interested in seeing what my setup is and some of my routine and how I managed to pull that all off, stay tuned. You're out here smelling the flowers. We gotta go film YouTube. Riot! You pain in my ass. Why do you yawn every time I try to start to start a take? Every time you yawn. So any of you that have a large family, you guys know that every single day is different. Every single day brings its own challenges. You know, missing shoes, missing backpack, where's my phone, my laptop charger is gone. I mean, there's just a constant array of nonsense that rains down on you as a mom all day, every single day. So in order for me to successfully incorporate this type of dog into that busy lifestyle, I had to make sure that my organization and my routine and my flow was very, very structured. So part of that means I don't need to spend time looking for a leash or a collar or a remote charger. Um, you know, where is Fury's harness? Where is Riot's Kong? Where, you know, I don't have time to mess around with all of that because at the end of the day, my children and my family are still my priority. These dogs are a full-time hobby, but my kids are my priority. So, you know, I spend more time worrying about what they need than I do my dogs. And the reason I'm able to dedicate that much more time to my children is because I keep this part of my life very, very structured and organized. So let me kind of give you guys a peek into what exactly that entails. So this is my at-home kennel set up in my garage. And one of the things that I do to stay organized is as you can see, I have put a basket with everybody's respective toys, collars, leash, harnesses, whatever they need individually. <laughs> hey, Stormy. You wanna say hi, mama? Say hi, Stormy. Hi, baby. Um, so everybody has everything that they need right here in their own basket, all organized. I never have to go looking for Riot's collar or Riot's um, harness. I never have to go looking for my favorite training apron, which by the way, is this Learberg three pocket apron. It's so simple, but it's, it's my favorite. Um, so yeah, everything is all kept organized right here, right where I need it. I never have to go looking for it. And when you have three dogs, you've got to keep this shit organized because when you have three collars, three harnesses, three leashes, three balls, three, you know, three of everything, you can misplace things pretty easily. So just making sure that they each have at least their own basket, you know, and it doesn't necessarily have to be out here with their kennel. That's just where I put my stuff, but definitely each of them having their own basket or their own, maybe their own backpack, right? Riot's got a backpack over here with his name on it. Um, just something that is specifically theirs, where you know that you keep their things specific to them. It is very, very important. And it's one of the things that makes this a lot easier for me. Here's another way I stay organized. I like having the things that I use often at my fingertips. So I have a cupboard where I keep all of their foods and treats, um, extra toys, tugs, leashes, you know, that kind of thing. It's all just gonna be right here where it's really easy for me to grab it. And again, not have to go looking for anything. Everything has to have its place. Speaking of place, Fury, place. Oh, you are gonna be bad because we're on camera. Place, Fury, place. Well, shit. 
We're gonna have to edit this out. So this setup out here in the garage is actually not where my dogs sleep. So they have completely separate kennels that are inside the home as well. We actually like gunner kennels a lot. So they each have their own gunner kennel. So here you have it. This is what our inside setup looks like. This is a gunner kennel. And as you can tell by the name on the front of this kennel, this one belongs to Fury. But Riot and Storm actually have their own as well. They're located in the dining room. And uh, I keep Fury here in the front room right next to the front door because she is actually my, I would say, highest trained uh, protection dog. And so I like having her nice and close. Um, but they sleep in the house and I actually don't always have them sleep in their crates. So, uh, well, with, with the exception of Storm because Storm is a puppy. Uh, but Riot and Fury actually get to be out at night, kind of like on a rotation schedule because they're protection dogs. So it doesn't make any sense for me to crate my dogs at night when they are protection dogs. And if anything's gonna happen, it's probably gonna be at night. So I definitely keep Riot and Fury kind of like on a nightly watch, you know, they get to uh, swap out from night to night and they will stand guard and make sure that our family is safe and sound at night. So in a nutshell, I think the thing that has made having multiple dogs definitely a lot easier is the fact that I've worked with a professional trainer from the beginning. And you guys have heard me say it once and you're gonna hear me say it again and I'm gonna keep saying it. You really do need to invest in a professional trainer. Uh, Belgian Malinois are challenging dogs and to say that I've managed this all on my own would be a complete lie. I really do attribute um, my successful integration of Malinois into our family lifestyle because I've worked with a trainer from day one. When I brought Riot home at eight weeks old, we were starting our training that very same week. And that has continued on over the last several years. I'd also recommend having a really solid place command inside the house if you have more than one dog. That has been a lifesaver when it comes to managing three Belgian Malinois inside the home. Sometimes I need them to get out of the way. I need them to go to a spot and stay there for a minute so that I can handle whatever I'm handling as a busy mom. So a solid, solid place command is a really, really big deal. I would recommend working hard on making sure that that's just as good as it could possibly be. Another great thing for me is patience at the threshold. I cannot stand when my dogs crowd me or run over me at the door. So potty time, coming in and out of the truck when we're you know loading in and out at a training session, what have you. Um, having that patience at the threshold Patients at the crate here, you know, like I don't want them when I open the door just bursting out and running out. That kind of stuff, that basic obedience stuff is a really big deal and it will make managing multiple dogs in a home much, much easier. some impulse control. That's not easy to do. Uh-uh. Sit. Good. Yes. Run, kitty, run. Riot, don't pee on So one of the things that I did in preparation for this video was actually reach out to a few of my friends and trainers that uh, I like and respect. I watch all of their content. I follow them across all of their social media platforms. These are just some really solid, solid people who definitely have some great advice to give us. So I reached out to them and I asked them personally, hey, can you record just a quick little what's a great tip or life hack or advice that you have to people who are managing multiple dogs. I'm sure that you will recognize some of the faces you are about to see. And if you don't, 
then you definitely need to go be following these folks. I will put all of the links to their YouTube channels, their social media and everything down in the description of this video, but let's check out what they had to say. Hey guys, Vinny here with Say It Once Dog Training. If you have a multiple dog household, I can guarantee you have a favorite dog and that's okay. I'm always met with a, I love them all the same. No, you don't, you have a favorite. That's not that big of a deal. But don't allow that favorite to push or prod or bend the rules just because you tend to like them more and you want them to have a higher position or higher rank within the household. That's not how this works. I also don't want you to think that your dog's gonna get jealous because you tend to do something more with one dog than you do with other dogs. If one dog is younger and requires more exercise and he gets more of your time and attention, that's okay. Your older dog is gonna be just fine. And it's also okay to have a little bit more strict rules and boundaries with a dog who may be younger or, or more ill-behaved. Don't think that they're gonna resent you because their brother's not getting the same rules. Whatever that particular dog needs, you are going to give them exactly that. Standardly overlooked in a multiple dog household, like the first thing is train each dog individually and then layer them in with one another, especially on walks. I am Mark and these are the three dogs in my household, Hawk, Mattis, and Storm. In training multiple dogs, I think it's important to remember that you wanna give the dog what that individual dog needs. Each dog learns a little bit different. And so like Mattis is extremely independent, Storm is highly prey driven, and Hawk is highly food driven. So use those things, know your dog, and know what they need individually and train them appropriately. I think there's some trainers out there that have the mindset of bend the dog to my will so that they will do what I want. Instead, find out what the dog likes and reward them with what they like for doing what you want. It's a great relationship builder. Hey guys, Courtney here with Global Canine Protection Services. And my friend Malligator Mom has asked me to share a few tips on living in a multi-dog family household. And although there's a lot, I wanna kinda of break it down into management of three different things. The first is behavioral management, okay? That could be general house manners such as barking, jumping up, doorway control. And this all starts with your initial dog. Having a good baseline of teaching what we want and reinforcing it and creating the good behaviors and preventing and correcting the bad ones are gonna set you and all those dogs up from here to come. Um, the next would be structure, time management. What's your daily routine with your dogs, okay? If you feed them, is it separate, is it together? Where do they sleep at night? Are they rotated throughout the house? come up with a good structure that works for you and all your dogs. And the last is a relationship. Cultivate an individual relationship with each dog. That goes from training to what their likes are. Does one of them like to cuddle more? Does one like to go on walks more? Who engages with your family better? All this will really help break down what you can achieve most with each individual dog. Matt and Atlas here from Canine Performance. And if I had to share my one tip for a multi-dog household, it would be to simply make sure that you spend time with each of your dogs independently. Sometimes it can be really easy to get wrapped up in your day, to wanna to take them all out on a walk together and save some time. But I promise you, spending that one-on-one -on -one individual time with each of your dogs, whether it's hand feeding, going on a walk, playing whatever it is, can really foster that relationship between you and all of your dogs and build a great culture for your household overall. Talk to you guys soon.